in times like these need a savior in times like these you need an anchor be very sure be very sure that your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. He is the one. This rock is Jesus. The only one. Be very sure. Be very sure that your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Good morning, Compton Hill, and all my church family. It's my privilege and my prayer that God let me here this morning to give a prayer to Compton Hill for um, being allowed to pray for this altar and see how much I feel and how much I thank God for being who I am. And like many people say, and many people do, we write down what we say, but the Holy Spirit take over. So I ask the Holy Spirit take over me and, and lead me in my prayer, okay? I want to thank God first for being uh, first in my life and in my heart, in my mind. And I thank God and Pastor Vester for allowing me to pray from this pulpit for all of us because I pray for all of us. And I pray now, right now, y'all, I pray with my head bowed and my heart, my head bowed and my heart clean. I pray right now that um, God will bless us with his presence in our life. Thank you, God, for being with us. Thank you, Pastor Vester, for allowing me to come for everybody, okay? And now, with that being in mind, I'd like to say this also. Um, we, are, we had in Sunday school about um, talk is cheap. And um, I, I relate that to this. We're from Missouri, and our sign from Missouri is the Show Me State. So we don't just say, we got to show what we do. And I want to show God and show everyone that I believe in God. He's first in my life, and I pray that He's first in everybody's life. So with that in mind, y'all, we all bow our heads and close our eyes and pray with me, okay? And as you pray with me, I want to keep this song in mind. Have a little talk with Jesus. So think that in your mind while you listen to me pray, okay? Here I go. Heavenly Father, Father our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, here we are once again in your presence, Father, giving all thanks to you for being our Father, our Creator, our everything. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, and we pray, God, that you will continue to be the leader in our life Guide our ways with, our, with your steps. Guide our steps with your way. Keep us, Father. Help me, Father. Help me, Holy Ghost. Keep talking. Oh, God. I want to say so much. There's so much to say and so many things to be thankful for. But we know who all of our good things come from. It's from you, Heavenly Father. We thank you. We pray to keep us in your word, Father. Keep us as we travel along our way, Father. Down this lonely road or this long road of earth, Father, but we know we are in this world, but we are not of this world. So we give all thanks for you, Father, for our teachers, for our preachers, for everything, for the presence of being with you, Father. We thank you for that, Father. And Father, now, as I go along, I pray, Father, that you will forgive us of the sins we might commit, coherently or incoherently, Father, and just keep us, teach us, Father, as we go along our way, Father. And we ask the Father that you would Forgive us of the sins we might commit coherently, incoherently, Father. Just thank you for being our Father and knowing in your word that you will forgive us. Not to, for, not to take for granted that you will forgive us, but we thank you for forgiving us because we know we're in a, 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 a sinful world, Father. And we will, as we wake up, Father, we will sin, but we pray and have thanks and knowledge that you and wisdom to know the knowledge we pray can um, apply that you are with us and you will stay with us and you will be with us as we travel along our way. And there is no mountain high enough, 
no valley low enough to keep you from us because we claim you, Jesus, as our Lord and Savior. So keep us, Jesus, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, Deacon Dovine, for that fervent, faithful, amen, and focused prayer. <clears throat> Good morning, Compton Hill, and all the rest of y'all, amen. It's wonderful to be here, amen, on this Sunday morning. <clears throat> we know here at Compton Hill that we are to buy the truth and sell it not. For words that fitly spoken are like apples of gold with pictures of silver. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ, who is also the God of all comfort and the God of all hope, who according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us together again into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Blessed, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Let me ask you a question. Uh, how many of you, beloved, are grateful for a second chance? Uh, you better hear me. Hear me. Uh, every morning that we wake up, God is giving, is giving us another chance. We're so grateful for another chance. And beloved, I don't care how anointed and appointed you think you are, we are in desperate need, amen, of another chance. <clears throat> Let us take the word of God and turn to John chapter 21. John chapter 21. Amen. And the word of God says, so when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, verse 15, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whether thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thine hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whether thou wouldest not. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. When he had spoken this, he said unto him, Follow me. Amen. I would like to speak to you, beloved, for the time that is mine. Redemption on the shores of failure. Redemption on the shores of failure. All of us, yes, all of us, especially adults, have to admit we have, we have known failure. You meant to do right. It came out wrong. You had every good intention but you blew it big time. You failed miserably. You gave your best effort, but you fell down flat. You tried to go one way, but it went the opposite way. Oh, help me somebody. Amen. You, walk, you wake up in the morning, plan to have a good day, and before three o'clock, the very thing you said you were, not, you were not gonna do, you find yourself doing. Paul said, when I would do good, evil is present with me. Oh, wretched man that I am, amen, not that I was, O oh, rich man that I am, amen. Who can save me from this body of death? Today, if you're not the worst sinner that you know, then you don't know yourself very well. I'm going to say that again. Today, if you are not the worst sinner that you know, then you don't know yourself very well. Stop listening to those name it, claim it, nab it, grab it preachers telling you that you, have, that you live above sin. Unless you live on the second floor, Amen. If somebody else, you don't live above sin. Oh, you better hear me. You answer your phone, praise the Lord. Amen. The two blessed be stressed. Those are great cliches, but beloved, you still sin. And sometimes you get up on the wrong side of the bed. Amen. Beloved, when you got saved, God did not fix it where you wouldn't sin anymore. When you got saved, God fixed it where you would not sin and enjoy it anymore. That's important because, beloved, when you got saved, a sin still chases you. 
At one time you were running, amen, towards sin. Now you're running from sin, but beloved, periodically sin is a little faster than you. Oh, you better hear me. Uh, beloved, <clears throat> sometimes I get up, I just don't feel saved. Oh, am I, am I only one in here? Amen. Sometimes you just don't feel saved. Uh, a friend of mine has a church, and uh, uh, he, uh, uh, and this, this woman always would praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And so uh, he, would, he would call her, he said, you know, just teasing her, um, it was before call ID. And he called, and uh, she has a phone, praise the Lord. And he hung up. And so then he waited a couple minutes, he called back, she has a phone, praise the Lord. And he hung up. So he waited a few minutes later, and he called, said, she has a phone, praise the Lord. And he hung up. <laughs> so he waited a couple minutes, he called back again, she said, hey, who is this playing the list? And started cussing him. <laughs> then he said, oh, it's me, so surrounded by back to you. Oh, oh, baby, I know this. But this is what I'm saying. Hear me. Beloved, all it takes is the right set of circumstances. Well, you better hear me. Amen. And you, you know, you will find yourself going off. Oh, you better it just takes the right set of circumstances. All of us, so we, we don't live above sin, but we live with the protection from sin by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Oh, you better hear me. So I need you to get this. Everybody in here knows what it's like, beloved, uh, to disappoint God. Oh, you better hear me. Amen. To fail miserably. Amen. And that's the story in the text today. Peter was uh, a wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, example of uh, the ups and downs of, a, of a, not a, com a converted man's life, a committed man's life. Oh, you better hear me. Uh, Peter was uh, the one to whom he recognized who Jesus was. And Jesus said, blessed are those Simon by Jonah. But flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which in heaven, he recognized him as the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Uh, Peter was also the one that Jesus had to say in that same conversation, get thee behind me, Satan. Oh, you better hear me. Peter was also the one that Jesus said, upon your faith, your commitment, or come your, your commitment and your admittance and recognition of who I am, upon that rock I will build my church. And he gave Peter the keys uh, to the kingdom. Peter introduced the gospel to the Jew, the Gentile, or oh, help me somebody, the Samaritans. Peter is an anointed, strong, appointed man of God to the point where Peter, amen, got, got so, was so anointed and filled with the Holy Spirit of God that his shadow, oh, help me somebody, amen, healed the sick. And so, beloved, hear me. Uh, Peter, his life and leadership and discipleship was second to none. But Jesus told Peter, amen, Peter was kind of feeling himself all the time. Peter said things that all of us would say if we had the courage. When Peter was feeling himself, Jesus said to Peter, before the rooster crows, you will deny you ever knew me. Amen. Peter literally refused to uh, bow down to when Jesus said what, what, that some would betray him. He said, I will never betray you. And he said to Peter, before the rooster crows, you better hear me, you will deny that you ever knew me. So Jesus is arrested. Not as a betrayal. Taken from courtroom to courtroom. From Pilate to Herod. From Herod back to Pilate. From Pilate to Caiaphas. From Caiaphas back to Pilate. While Peter is warming his hands by the Roman fire. Oh, help me somebody. Amen. He's following Jesus, the Bible says, afar off. Oh, now let me, let me, let me park here a minute. Uh, afar off. Uh, afar off means uh, a distance. Far off means uh, out of focus. A far off uh, means uh, lack of concentration. And beloved, the first step toward backsliding is following a far off. Oh, you better hear me. Coming to church once a month. Amen. Missing Bible study. Not coming to Sunday school. Uh, listening to woman that are loose tapes all the time. Uh, Hear me, when you can get loose and copy here at Missionary Baptist Church. Oh, you better hear me. If, if you just come to church, you would be loosed. You can't get warm away from the fire. Amen. It's impossible. 
You can't be the Christian God wants you to be away from other Christians. Oh, help me somebody. No such thing as a Christian who purposefully won't come to church. Oh, you better hear me. It's foreign to the New Testament. You can't be a Christian following Jesus afar off. Oh, please get that. You can't be a Christian in isolation. Help me somebody. Amen. The longer you stay away from the fire, the colder your enthusiasm will come, the colder your spirit will become. Amen. It's like the, 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 uh, the, the, the couple are riding the pickup truck, and they've been married for over 50 years. And so she's, she's riding in the, in the truck with her husband, and she's looking out the window, amen, on the side, he's on his side driving, and she says, Ned, uh, there was a time when we were riding, and, amen, you would put your, you know, your knee on my leg, and I'll put my head on your shoulder, you know, but now we ride, we just, you know, I sit by the door, and you sit by the door. And he said to her, Sadie, I ain't the one that moved. Oh, yeah, you don't think you got that. Sadie, I'm not the one that moved. I'm still behind the same steering wheel like I always been. You're the one that moved. Oh, you better hear me. Now get this, beloved. Jesus Christ, God is always where he's always been. Beloved, and if you get if you if you're getting like lukewarm or cold, you're following Jesus afar off. He's God is always where he's always been. So if you find yourself getting lukewarm, amen, or getting colder, it's because you are following Jesus Christ far off. Or far off. And if that's the case, he will spit you out. You better hear me. In the courtyard, a girl sees Peter. Get this. A girl sees him and says, you're one of them. And Peter says, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, help me somebody. She says, I've seen you with him. Peter says, I don't know the man. Oh, help me somebody. Amen. She says a third time, your speech betrays you. Amen. And Peter starts cursing. Oh, help me somebody. In denial, and immediately the rooster crowed. Now, what he did was, uh, he had a Galilean accent. And the Galilean accent, uh, he couldn't deny but he starts using profanity with the Galatian accent that made it easier for, for him to deny. Oh, you ain't hearing me. Uh, it's not how you say what you say, uh, but beloved, it's what you say. What comes out of the mouth is what's down in the heart. Oh, you better hear me. Amen. Jesus, beloved, looks Peter in the eyes because immediately after he said that, the rooster crowed. Oh, help me. The rooster crowed, and when the rooster crowed, Jesus, Look Peter right in the eye. Amen. And Peter remembered the court. Oh, you better hear me. Amen. The Bible says that Peter went out and wept bitterly. Oh, help me somebody. He wept bitterly. Amen. He cried and cried and cried and cried. Oh, help me somebody. And if you're going to have redemption on the shores of failure, amen, you must have three things. Amen. First, you must have regret. You must have uh, uh, regret. Uh, the worst thing you can ever do is to sin and brag on it. Or sin and enjoy it. Or sin and enhance it. Oh, help me somebody. Uh, <clears throat> beloved, uh, disappointing, to disappoint God and have no regret is a, is a major, major problem. Uh, if I'm not going to, uh, I can't judge your, your salvation uh, by just watching you. I, I'm out of place. But if you can sin and, and it not bother you, I, I, I can question it. Oh, help me. If you can sin and it doesn't bother you, know how, do you know how you know if you're close to God? The way you can recognize if you're close to Christ sin. Sin. And once you sin, the way that the way that you feel after you recognize that you've sinned will, will truly reveal how close you are to Christ. Oh, you better hear me. Amen. 
Pastor, a lot of them have regrets, and you say it all the time, Pastor, if I knew then what I know now, I would have left that fool at, at his mama's house. Oh, that's a regret for you. Amen. You better hear me. All of us have regrets. Worse than not waiting on God is wishing that you had later on. Hey, beloved, all of us in here can recall when we look back over our lives in the rearview mirror some regrets. All of us have some regrets. Oh, beloved, hear me. Uh, I remember in 1974, I was riding home in a cab uh, from the Ali Foreman fight. I'll never forget this. And uh, uh, it was down at the, at, at the Kilo Auditorium. We were in, I was in the cab, running my mouth, bragging things. And an old man got in the cab. And an old man got in the cab. And so we were riding home. And as we were riding home, uh, I was running my mouth. And the cab driver was was humorously entertained. So he said, man, I'm not going to charge you nothing. You, I, got, I ain't going to charge you nothing. So I was, steady. I was only 16 years old. So I was just running my mouth, happy about that Ali had won. And the old man that was riding uh, uh, with us, uh, uh, he said, oh, you ain't going to charge him? He said, he said uh, the old man said to the cab driver, how much would you charge me to take me back 15 years? I never get, he looked at me and he looked at, what would you charge to take me back 15 years? Oh man, how about you? Let me ask you something. Amen. What are you willing to pay that somebody to take you back 10 years, five years, one year, last month, last week, last night? Uh, let me ask you, wouldn't it be great to be able to, to now send a letter to the younger you? Oh, if I could send a letter to a 20-year-old me, what would that letter say? Lord have mercy. Hey, man. Beloved, and all of us, oh, help me somebody, all of us have regrets. All of us have something we wish we could undo. Oh, you better hear me. Amen. If you live long enough, you're going to have some regrets. You're going to have some regrets. So the first thing you have to deal with is regrets. But regret is not where God wants you to stay. Oh, hear me. God wants you to move from regret to remorse. From regret to remorse. Amen. Hear me. Uh, remorse, beloved. Uh, Peter wept bitterly. And Peter and Judas committed the same sin. They actually, they equally denied and betrayed Christ. Judas' sin was no worse than Peter's and vice versa. There are no degrees of sinfulness. Amen. We love to make the sin real bad that we're not committed. Oh, you ain't hearing me. People love to talk. If, 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 if you're not homosexual, you want to pass and talk about homosexuality. Uh, if, 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 you know, if, if you're not a drinker, you want to, you want to, to, to pass a preach about drinking. Whatever it is that you're not doing is the worst sin that you want to pass and talk about. But when they get about talking about yours, what you're doing, oh, pastor, now come on, uh, you meddling, you're, getting, you're stepping on my toes. Beloved, never forget this. Never forget this. All unrighteousness is sin. All unrighteousness is sin. Beloved, both of them showed regret. Judas tried to give the money back. Both had regret. Only one had remorse. Simon Peter went out and wept bitterly. That's remorseful. He wept bitterly. Now let me ask you something. When was the last time you cried over your sin? When was the last time you really felt bad about something you had done? Amen. I don't mean just, you know, uh, had a guilty conscience. But I mean cried, mourned, amen, mourned over your sin. You know, the Bible says, blessed are those that mourn. Oh, you ain't hearing me. Amen. For they shall be comforted. Uh, a good friend of mine, Alan Ely, and I worked together uh, for years. And uh, uh, I was up. So we were, we were in a truck. And a guy was in a truck, in a, in a, in a Southwest Bell truck. And he purposely wouldn't move so we could get by. And so uh, uh, I had just given my life to Christ maybe a year or so. I had been walking with Christ maybe a year or so. 
And I have, I used to have a, a temper problem. Uh, uh, and so I thought I could solve everything uh, with the right cross. When I realize now, amen, it is the right cross. Amen. But so the gentleman wouldn't move. So when we uh, blew the horn, he just sat there, you know, and sat there. And so while we went, once we went around him, uh, I jumped out the truck and uh, I tried to uh, pull him out of the truck. Take me somewhere here, though. And I tried to pull him out of the truck, and he had the belt seatbelt, and he he was trying to roll it, trying to roll his, his window up so that I couldn't get in because I was trying to get to him because I was living. Now hear me. And Alan and I went. We sat. And we had lunch. And during the lunch hour, uh, the Holy Spirit said, "What you did to that man was wrong." And I went. Oh help! Me. I went put my lunch down and went back to that truck. And I went back to that truck. He saw the truck he was going to leave. But I was going to apologize because uh, the Holy Spirit convicted me. Now, hear me. He was wrong for what he did to us, but I was wrong with how I reacted. And the Holy Spirit said, you know, beloved, I don't care what you did was wrong. Don't try to justify what you did. That was one of the first times I really had remorse over sin. It was the first time. And beloved, I remember it like it was yesterday. God will prevent you from doing the same thing over and over again if you ask him to. Just ask God, help me, Father, with this weakness. Amen. He, Lord, help me to prevent me from doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. Beloved, because that's what, that's what remorse is. You don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. Going from regret to remorse is the only way to get to repentance and restoration. You hear me. Going from regret to remorse is the only way to get to repentance and restoration. Amen. Now, what is restoration? Okay, they, they are... Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. And... Jesus says to the other disciples, uh, go tell all the, the brothers and Peter, because he thinks about Peter. Uh, help me show you how loving Jesus Christ is. He says, tell all the, all the brother, brethren to come and Peter, because he knows Peter's heart is crushed and broken. Now get this. <clears throat> uh, so they're, they're back fishing. Uh, uh, and Peter says, I'm going back fishing. And the others follow him. Now, 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 now. let me parenthetically pause here a moment. Misery loves company. But Peter had influence. Peter said, I'm going back fishing. I'm going back to the life I used to live. Jesus is gone. We haven't seen him. I'm going back to the life I used to live. And the others said, we're going to. Because Peter, even though Peter was wild, Peter had influence. Oh, you better hear me. Because Peter had courage to say and do what he said and did. You, you understand what I'm saying? It's people that, are, that are, are, are aggressive at times have a tendency to be dominant and influence other people that will follow them. So the rest of the disciples had been with, with Jesus and with Peter, but Jesus is gone. So Peter said, I'm going back fishing. The rest of them said, we're going too. Now hear me. hear me. Misery will always love company and influence. So I'm telling you now, beloved, be careful on who you listen to. Be careful on who you listen to. Amen. So <clears throat> Jesus says to them, show how loving he is. Now he could have said, look at you out there fishing, you can't get nothing now. Because they shot, they, they fished all night, didn't get anything. Because they had been with Jesus, and, until, and when you've been with Jesus, if you're not with Jesus, you'll fail everything else you do. Oh, you better hear me. Uh, if, you, if Jesus Christ has made a call in life, has saved you, and given you an assignment, you will fail at anything else you do if you don't do it with Jesus. Oh, you better hear me. And so, uh, the essence, so they're out there fishing, and they don't have anything. And Jesus says to them, Children, have you got any meat? Hear me. So instead of, amen, saying that's what you get for not for going back fishing, he's already got fish on the grill. Oh, help me somebody. He's got fish on the grill. Uh, and John recognizes that it's Jesus. And when John recognizes that it's Jesus, uh, uh, they run to him, amen. And when they run to him, uh, uh, they all come to the boat, they come to the shore, and they run to him and eat with Jesus. Amen. And they get to break bread with him. Oh, help me. Amen. Preachers like I feel it. 
No one, beloved, nobody breaks bread like Jesus. Oh, help me somebody. Nobody. There are things that Jesus does in your life that no one else can do. Oh, help me somebody. Nobody can encourage you. Nobody can embrace you. Nobody can enhance you. Nobody can exalt you. Nobody can escort you. Nobody can empower you like Jesus can. Oh, you better hear me. And there are some things that you can only get at church. Oh, help me somebody. Amen. There are only things that you can get at church or in the word of God that you cannot get anywhere else. You know, in Hebrews it says, forsake not to assemble yourselves together. It says, it doesn't say forsake not reading your Bible. It doesn't say forsake not singing your hymns. It's, it doesn't say forsake not teaching. It says forsake not assembling yourself together or coming to, church, that's coming to church because there's something that you get mm, when you come to church that you can get anywhere else. There's something that you get is the reason why I said you must come to church. Oh, help me somebody. Amen. That you can't get anywhere else. You know, how many times have you been to church and you get home and somebody asks you, uh, how was church today? And you start telling them what happened at church, but uh, it loses something in the translation. You can tell them about church, but it ain't the same. Uh, uh, you just have to be there. Oh, help me somebody. Uh, you just have to be there. The church is not just a building. The church is an atmosphere. Oh, help me somebody. It's an atmosphere. Amen. Folks have been dissing the church during this pandemic. Now they're missing the church. Oh, you better hear me. Amen. There's something that you get that you can get nowhere else than you get in the church. Oh, help me. You have to experience Jesus and the church for yourself. Amen. You have to experience it for yourself. So while on the shore together with Jesus, Jesus did three things for people. He found him. He fed him. And he freed him. Say it again. He found him. He fed him. And he freed him. And that's what the Lord has done for every one of us. Each of us, beloved. He found you. He fed you. And if you let him, he'll free you. Oh, you better hear me. Amen. He asked Peter three times, do you love me? Amen. Asked him three times. Three direct questions. Amen. So that he get three direct denials. Oh, I need to get this. He denied Christ three times. Remember? So, he, so now he asked him three times that he loved him. Each time saying, yes, you know that I love you. He gives Peter a chance, amen, to say what he didn't say when he was asked before. Ain't God all right? Ain't God all right? Amen. Uh, he tells Peter, uh, you dress yourself now, Peter. You're young and vibrant. Amen. But one day, someone will dress you and when you're older and, and take you places you don't, you, you don't know where you're going. Uh, as you get older, things occur. Uh, uh, when I was at Galilee, uh, there was a young lady. Uh, uh, she, God's called her home now. Her name was Sister Driver. And Sister Driver, uh, I used to, as a deacon, would <clears throat> feed uh, 15 families every, every Thanksgiving. And so I would take the family, she was one of the families that I would feed, but she lived by herself, her husband had passed. She lived in University City, and so I, uh, 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 so I would take her, take the, the, the dinner to her, and, and she became a little fascinated, uh, a little more than she should. So, but being older, so one Sunday she came to church, and she came to church, she had all of her rings on, all of her watches on, all of her bracelets on, Amen. She had, uh, she had all of the necklaces. Amen. Uh, uh, because uh, Sister Driver uh, had 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 a crush on a funny-looking deacon, uh, and th this day she dressed herself. She had dressed herself. Oh, I don't think y'all got this picture. Amen. Uh, uh, the essence is. I knew when I saw her, and other, other folks in the church knew the way that Sister Driver looked, that she addressed herself. Oh, you better hear me. And when he says to Peter, one day, uh, you know, you, you're not going to be able to dress yourself. Somebody will have to dress you so that you, so you, they'll know that you're doing it in your right mind. Oh, oh help me teach this thing. Amen. Now, uh, 
Let, okay, let, let me make it even more personal. I love fragrances. I love cologne. And uh, one of the things uh, that uh, we do at Comfort Hill is uh, we have our uh, fellowship moment. We hug everybody. All of us hug each other. And a lot of times I was told that they go home and say, you know, I went home, my husband got home because I smell just like you, Pastor. I smell your cologne. Well, now, uh, uh, to me at times it's flattering, but not always flattering to people, right? And it's not flattering to uh, a husband that stayed at home from church, come home and your wife come in smelling like another man. But hear me, hear me. But I think that one of the things that a fragrance does is fragrances uh, uh, expose the environment you come from. Oh, you ain't hearing me. Uh, those of uh, you can remember when a loved one would go to a lounge, you know somebody go to, and they come in and you can smell smoke on them. Hey, Amen. You can folks that smoke all the time or, or, or around folks that smoke, you can smell it on them because they, you, the fragrance will reveal the environment you come from. Oh, you better hear me. So when you come home from church, oh, help me somebody, and you've been embracing Jesus Christ, you need to, amen, you ought to smell like Jesus. Oh, help me somebody. You ought to talk like Jesus. You ought to walk like Jesus. There should be some change, amen, when you've been with Jesus. Once you've had regret, remorse, and repentance, and God has restored you, you ought to be like Jesus. Help me somebody, amen. Act like Jesus, mimic him, talk like him, walk like him, look like him, love like him, sound like him, serve like him. Everybody should know that you've been with Jesus. Help me, somebody. Amen. He beloved, he found him. Yes, Lord. He fed him. Amen. And he freed him. Oh, help me, somebody. Yes, Lord. Uh, the last word I'm going to say, and then I'll sit down. Uh, several years ago, I participated in a revival uh, at First Baptist of Creve Coeur with Pastor, uh, Pastor Lacey uh, several years ago. And, uh, he's gone on to be with the Lord now, but a very influential, loving mentor uh, of mine, uh, Pastor Lacey. And uh, Dr. Freddie Clark was a revivalist that, that week. And a good friend of mine that's a member of that, of, of that church named Reverend Jordan was a preacher uh, at First Baptist of Creve Coeur. <clears throat> And so he took me with him the first two days. I rode with him. Amen. But the last day, he had something he had to do. So he couldn't make it. But I said, uh, I told him, I said, that's okay, Reverend Jordan, I got it. Amen. Now, <clears throat> anybody that knows me knows how I am about direction. Oh, help me somebody. Amen. Uh, uh, I just, I don't know, I just draw a blank. I, 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 my IQ just evaporates. Uh, and Creed Corps or anywhere else other than the north side is a jigsaw puzzle. Fair and Lee, amen. If you're not at Fair and Lee, it's a jigsaw puzzle. I know Fair, I know Lee, I know Farland. I know Casus, I know Margareta, I know San Francisco, I know Sacramento, I know Nacho Bridge. But anywhere else for me is a jigsaw puzzle. Oh, you better hear me. I've, I've just learned uh, within the last year or two different routes to get to Compton Hill. Oh, you better hear me. Amen. Olive, Olive Street Road, Old Olive Street Road, to me, is a jigsaw puzzle. Amen. You laugh at me if you want, but that's, that's just the truth. So I was going out there that night because I was going to do the prayer. And I was riding, trying to get there in time, and it's dark, and I'm by myself, and I'm running late. Oh, help me somebody. Uh, so I'm riding up and down, and I can't find, I, I, I can't, I'm lost. I'm lost. And so I look up, and I see a Karl Mart liquor store. The name of it was Cal Mart. Calmart Liquor Store. And I pulled, I pulled up, and there's a brother on the lot, drunk. I mean, blitzed. Amen. So I rolled my window down, and I said, Brother, uh, sir, I need your help. I'm trying to find 
First Baptist of Creve Corps Missionary Baptist Church. And he says to me, Welcome. He says this. He hit my hood on the car. And he says, <clears throat> hit it three times. He says, where are you going now? Don't go that way no more. Oh, you better hear me. Uh, make a U-turn. He told me, make a U-turn. Amen. Look for Zion Baptist Church. It's, it has a cross on the top that's lighted, amen, to look like it's burning, what he told me, amen. Make a right turn at that church. Keep straight, and you can't go wrong. You'll run right into it. You got it? I said, uh, run it by me one more time. <laughs> he came up. He knocked. The way you're going now, don't go that way no more. He said, you got to make a U-turn. Oh, help me somebody. Amen. Let me ask you. Amen. Is there anybody here at Compton Hill Missionary Baptist Church that doesn't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? The way you're going now, don't go that way no more. Amen. You need to make a U-turn. Oh, you better hear me. God has given us all the opportunity, all of us, of making a U-turn. A U-turn is going the opposite way that you were going. Oh, help me somebody. And at the cross, amen, at the cross of Calvary, oh, beloved, God made the ultimate U-turn for us. Oh, it gave us opportunity to make a U-turn. Oh, beloved, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now, yes Lord, right now, I am happy all the day because Calvary is a U-turn, beloved. Amen. For he died. Amen. Didn't he die? He died on a hill called Calvary. Help me somebody. And he stayed there all night Friday, all day Saturday, all night Saturday night. But early Sunday morning, yes sir, early Sunday morning, he got up with all power, with all power in his hands. And for that reason, oh beloved, he's my king. Oh man, he's the, he's the king of kings. You know, uh, I've been looking at CNN and watching these different countries and what's going on. And uh, there, are very, there are not many kings left anymore. Not a lot of uh, monarchies. Uh, a monarchy is a form of government in which power resides in an individual until death, then passes to the heir and to the son. Uh, 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 but we've seen steep declines in the last century, of course, but much of the world was ruled by royalty in 1900. Uh, but today, only 44 nations have monarchs, 16 of which are Commonwealth realms recognizing Queen Elizabeth as a head of state. I'm taking you somewhere. Citizens living in a monarchy have a better understanding of the word sovereign. Amen. See, the person in the White House now thinks he's sovereign. He's not sovereign. Oh, you better hear me. Amen. So people that have monarchies, they know more about sovereignty, that sovereignty than those who don't. But few live in a realm where the monarch possesses absolute sovereignty. Amen. An absolute sovereign Amen. Has unlimited right to control everything and everybody within his or her territory. And in politics, the, this creates reigns of terror. In the divine realm, beloved, it gives unlimited peace when we accept the absolute sovereignty of our blessed Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. He is the king of the Jews. Help me, somebody. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's, a, he's the eternal king. He is the king of kings, beloved. Let his absolute reign comfort you today. The way you're going now, don't go that way no more. Amen. Make the U-turn. Come toward and bow down to the king. My choice is King Jesus. Help me, somebody. He's reigning above. His service is gladness. His banner is love. Ain't he all right? Up? Ain't he all right? Up? Ain't he all right? Up? I know he's all right. Yes, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen.
We come down now. We, amen. Prepare our hearts. Amen. Our souls for the benediction. Love it. <clears throat> amen. Look up and love him. Look down and pray to him. Look in and trust him. Look out and worship him. Live life expecting him. Now unto him. Yes, Lord. Is able to keep you from falling. Present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. I love your company. Amen.